What's up guys, Spin Firearms here, and one of my beliefs over here at this channel is there's not a single handgun for everybody in the world. There's not a certain size, a certain brand, a certain caliber. We all believe that there's something different that we like, that this person might not, that that person might not, or that I might not like. We also have different experiences. Some people have $2,500 guns that jam every five minutes. Some people have $250 tortoises that run flawlessly. We all trust our handguns to a different degree, and... That's just part of the game, right? So over here, I try and cover everything that I can. It's not always the easiest, um, but we're going to try and do it. And these are two handguns that I haven't touched on in a while. Um, a lot of people think 45 ACP is pointless. And a lot of people would never even pick up a 10 millimeter simply due to recoil. But I just want to tell you guys there are awesome reasons to have stuff like this. Uh, and we're going to get into it. And another thing I want to say is shout out to somebody who said <laughs> your backdrop is... I love your videos, but... Your backdrop's not that great. Where you film, not the greatest. So it was actually really cool. They uh, sent me something from Amazon with a bunch of different backdrops and stands and all sorts of stuff. It was just really cool. You know, it didn't cost the most. But just the fact that he thought about me and, you know, and about my backdrop, making it look a little more professional. He knows I'm not the most technically savvy. Actually pretty dang cool. So respect. And I appreciate that. It means a lot to me. Another handgun I thought we'd touch on a little bit is the XD45 ACP Subcompact. Now, the reason I want to touch on this is I found it used for $275, and that's obviously because it's a Springfield, and it's got the grip zone, the grip zone, and it's actually funny, I gotta tell you a story. Someone commented on my videos and said they were in a local gun store, and someone started singing the grip zone song for one of my YouTube shorts, and he says as that guy was singing it, another guy chimed in and started singing it as well, so I thought that was really funny, obviously it's just a joke, I'm not serious about it, I just think it's funny. Everyone makes fun of it, but the grip zone truly feels pretty dang good in the hand. And these handguns are great shooters. This one being in 45 ACP, you can find them really cheap. These calibers that aren't 9mm anymore, you can find the handguns for great, great deals. Now, Glocks values typically stay where they're at, but Springfields, you can get them for awesome deals. And man, are some of these, some of these handguns durable, last a long time, and reliable. I have three XDs, one in 45, two in 9mm, great guns. Anyways, let's talk about the 10 millimeter. What do I use this for? I personally do not carry it because this is the SF. And so this has a thinner frame. I personally do not like this for carry thinner this way. It's still a very thick handgun. I don't carry it because it's thicker. It's heavier, especially loaded down with 10 millimeter rounds. But a lot of people do carry this. And people in like Alaska or bear country, you have to carry 10 millimeter. Let me rephrase that. You don't have to, but a 10 millimeter out of a semi-automatic Glock is you know a perfect answer same with the xdm is in 10 millimeter you know there's all sorts of options but for me if i lived in alaska i would carry a glock 29 10 millimeter and you can throw the 15 round mag from the glock 20 in that thing and be good to go comes with a rail it's a little bit bigger than your average glock subcompact um and this setup right here is actually pretty solid it's 11 plus one with this extension so 12 rounds of 10 millimeter what i like to say about this is you can take on anything in north america even people on cocaine the Glock 29 will get the job done. And in a lot of cases, all it takes is one round um, with a human, right? And obviously, we don't want to use our firearms, but you have to talk realistically. One round versus, you know, I told the story about there was somebody really hopped up on drugs who was attacking a police officer that my family's good friends with. And that person took eight rounds of 40 before they stopped attacking her. And you guys can watch that video up on the channel. I can't actually talk about how he was attacking her. But let's just say the motion was like this, right? So, uh, yeah, Glock 29, a little bit bigger than a Glock 26, a little bit bigger than a Glock 27, a little bit heavier. But that big, thick, heavy slide really does help with the recoil. And the SF frames are actually really nice. They feel pretty dang good in the hand. And on top of that, you can get the flush 9-round mags, which makes it still a very small and concealable package. So, absolutely love this thing. It's a great handgun. One thing I do recommend, though, is changing out the sights on it. And I went with the XS sights. This is a three dot sight setup, all tritium. Give me a second. See, as you can see, they're all tritium. And you have that nice orange outline up front. One of my favorite sight pictures. I have it on a couple handguns, a couple 26s, stuff like that. And I love it. One thing I would recommend though is getting it stippled or getting some grips put on it. When I go to bear country, when I go to wildcat territory, this is what I carry. I know this will get the job done. This will protect me and it stays on my hip. If we go camping, this is what I carry. So I love my Glock 29. I think everyone should have a 10 millimeter 
whether it's a Springfield, whether it's a SIG, whatever the case may be, it doesn't matter the brand. I think everyone should have a 10 millimeter for just personal defense, regardless of where you live. I think it's a great gun. You don't have to carry it every day, but it's just something good to have. You never know when you're going to travel, never know when you're going to go places, and capacity is decent. It takes all the larger mags. That's why I go with the Sub Compact 29. And actually, the recoil isn't terrible. Every 10 millimeter is going to have bad recoil in terms of comparing it to a 9 millimeter and stuff like that. But realistically, it's manageable. You just have to put rounds through it. And in this Glock 29, I got to be honest, I have had one failure and it was caught on camera. Um, that was in the SIG P365 versus Hellcat. We ran 500 rounds through each in one video nonstop. And while my mom was loading the mags, yes, my mom, shout out to her. She was loading the mags so we could complete the video. And I pulled this out to shoot it. And with that weird red tip, I think Cinertech Federal Ammo, I had one malfunction. So that's the only time ever, never a single issue ever since then or before then. And that was at like 1300 rounds. And I've ran hard cast. I've ran all sorts of ammo through this. I run hard cast through my other barrel um, that I use for my Glock 29. Just a good, good, reliable handgun. Next up, the Glock 30 SF 45 Auto. Now, what would you carry this for? Well, there's a lot of people like that like 45 ACP. It's a big, heavy round. And especially with the ammo technology nowadays, they make some great, great ammo options. Even in the woods, I've heard stories of 45s taking down bears. Now, obviously, it's not your first go-to. I wouldn't recommend it. But if you did have a 45 for personal carry, you could get the job done. Now, on this, I have true glow sights, three dots with white outlines. Just a good, solid handgun. These are both going to be the same exact size, same width, same capacity. But this thing right here with the SLR rifle workspace plate is 12 plus 1. So this is going to be 13 plus 1. What I meant by the same capacity is with all the um, OEM mags that are the same size, right? This handles 45 like an absolute champ. Very little recoil. And some people prefer a bigger hole, especially with the am ammunition. Gosh, that sounded terrible with all the stuff going on with Diddy and Drake. Sorry. Some people prefer a bigger projectile uh, when defending themselves. And I get it especially with the ammo nowadays. So I do carry 45 ACP every now and then, believe it or not. I carry it out of an XDS though. But this right here is a great way to go. Once again, a little bit bigger than a 26 and a 27. But at the same time, you are getting that bigger hole. Slower round, but packs a punch. Like I said, with G9 defense, Civil Liberty defense, Underwood, Corvin, there's all sorts of great ammo out there for 45 ACP models. This right here, awesome setup. Now, what would I use this for? Everyday carry. In the wintertime, I do carry it. And on top of that, it's just a blast at the range. It's fun to shoot. It's fun to have. And I do like 45. I have nothing against it. All rounds will work. There's not a single round in self-defense that won't work. Now, some are better than others in terms of performance. But typically, if you have a firearm on you and you let shots go, that solves the problem. It's not about the actual ammunition. At that point, it's if you can get shots on target. And that's the biggest thing. And this is very smooth shooting. So for the rounds you can get, the foot-pound energy out of this thing, you can have an amazing self-defense handgun. And like I said, you can potentially put a bear down. I don't recommend it. But there are many, many stories of people taking down bears with a uh, regular full metal jacket or FMJ ammo out of a Glock in 45 ACP. Awesome, awesome handgun. And it's competitor, like I said. This cost me $4.99. And you can find them used for maybe $4.50. Typically, the 45s and the 10s don't go as low as like a please trade in 17 or a please trade in 26. But you can get it for $4.50, $4.25, some places, depending on um, their condition and stuff like that. That's where something like this comes in. The Springfield XDMs and XDs in 10 millimeter and 45, I've seen them for ridiculous prices. I saw a 10 millimeter XDM for $3.50. I should have jumped on it. I regret it to this day. The XDMs are great. I have the 9 millimeter version, but for a bear defense, or an overall home defense, you cannot beat either of these firearms or rounds, calibers, or brands. They're all just great. Now, this is more of a subcompact. This is more geared towards carry. has a little bit smaller barrel. Um, awesome grip on it. 9 plus 1 with this mag. Or you can use the flush mag that's also 9 plus 1. Just good, reliable handguns. Um, I love them. So if you're looking for a cheaper 45, this would be the way to go. But one thing I will say about the Springfields are they are more accurate than the Glocks. Springfield is well known on a bench test, on a st stationary test, for being some of the most reliable barrels in the industry. People don't like to talk about that because all the controversy with Springfield, and I get it, but at the same time, they make a good product, a good quality product. And on top of that, this one's in stainless, so how could I turn it down for 275 or maybe even been 300? 
but it was still a great steal. Great price. I'll compare the sizes real quick. Just an, I just wanted to point it out that there's great options out there for a little bit cheaper, um, but the SLR Rifle Works really does help the Glock get better capacity for its size. I like this handgun, and for 275 300 you can't beat it. I do prefer the Glocks, though. Um, but yeah, just some good options I wanted to put out there. Once again, thank you for the backdrop. I appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Thanks for watching, guys.